In recognition of Blood Cancer Awareness Month, we are pleased to welcome you to Blood Cancer Explained, hosted by AbbVie. Hello, my name is Vilke Lamanju. I'm the Director of U.S. Oncology Public Affairs for AbbVie. Nearly everyone has been touched by cancer, either directly or through family and friends. What many may not know is that cancer can take different forms depending on where it originates in the body. And while an initial reaction to a cancer diagnosis may feel grim, tremendous research and treatment innovations that move beyond chemotherapy, particularly in a cancer that originates in the blood. In today's roundtable discussion, we will explore the complexities of blood cancers, what you need to know about risk factors, diagnosis and treatment, and what the medical and advocacy communities can do to support patients and their loved ones. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Alexis Gebner, and I'm a PA specializing in leukemia at a large academic medical center in Houston, Texas. I've been in practice for 11 years, and I can't believe this. I am also an active member of APSHO, the Advanced Practitioner Society for Hematology and Oncology, and our mission is to improve the quality of care for patients with cancer by supporting critical issues in education, clinical, and professional development for advanced practitioners in hematology and oncology. Hi, I'm Michelle Rajah. Thank you for having me. I'm the Associate Director of the Information Resource Center at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and I've been there for 17 years. It's the part of the Leukemia Lymphoma Society where you can call if you're a caregiver, a patient, anybody who wants to use information, support resources, uh, clinical trial searches, pretty much anything that you need if you or your loved one's been diagnosed with a blood cancer. Hello, and thank you for having me here today. Um, I am a global development leader here at AbbVie for almost two years. I am a physician by training, and I am dedicated for um, a couple of decades now um, for you know, research and development of uh, cancer treatment. Mariana, first question is for you. So we have folks on the line here who are learning about what is a blood cancer, maybe for the first time. Can you tell us in very simple terms, what is a blood cancer and how is it different from a solid tumor cancer? Cancer can affect any part of the body, including the blood. So for many people, when we mention the word cancer, they usually imagine a lump or a tumor in specific organ or a part of the body that you are actually able to feel by hand. But the fact is cancer can live all over the body. They can be found in our bloodstream or hide in our lymphatic system. So when we talk about the blood cancer, we usually talk about leukemias, lymphomas and myeloma. So Leukemia affects the blood and the bone marrow. Lymphoma starts in the immune system and affects the lymph nodes and lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell. Myeloma is, on the other hand, a cancer of the plasma cells, which are also a type of lymphocytes that make antibodies to protect against infections. They are all forms of blood cancer, but they affect the body in different ways. So it is important to understand that different types of blood cancer have different treatment options and that the prognosis can be different as well. So blood cancers are roughly 10% of all cancers in the US and compared to solid tumors like Mariana had stated, um, it may seem like it's a rare diagnosis because you're not gonna see as many commercials or ads supporting these type of cancers like you do with breast or prostate or even lung cancer. Um, so one difference is the symptoms. So some blood cancers may cause symptoms such as fatigue, weight loss, sometimes easy bleeding, night sweats, and swelling of the lymph nodes that she had brought up, while others might not show symptoms at all. So some of them will show up abruptly, while others will develop over time. And some patients don't even have symptoms when they come in. So it's very important that patients, or any of us actually, go to our annual visits with primary care providers and have blood work at least once a year. Yeah, it's incredibly important, definitely, to be in regular contact with your healthcare provider and uh, to get that early diagnosis. Mariana, as a physician, help us understand um, how is a blood cancer typically treated um, and how is that different from a solid tumor type of cancer treatment? Common treatments for blood cancer include chemo and radiotherapy, targeted therapies, stem cell transplantation, and immunotherapy. And even though treatments for blood cancer have vastly improved over the last several decades, 
still there remains a high unmet need to improve survival and quality of life of the patients with certain types of blood cancer. So for some patients, part of their treatment care could be delivered by participation in clinical trial. And by participating, patients play a major role in the development, research, and innovation process that can lead to new therapies and treatment standards. The difference between blood and, and blood cancers and solid tumors, where you know, if you have a solid tumor, you often try to surgically remove it, just like she was talking about. And patients will come in thinking, well, I can't, can I surgically remove this? And the thing, the difference between a solid tumor and a liquid tumor, at least one difference, is the patients are wondering if they have metastases. Like, has my, my disease spread? And the thing about blood is it's already everywhere. Treatment differs uh, so much, one, because of that, and two, depending on when the patient comes in. Recognizing the complexity of a blood cancer, what might be some of the key messages you would deliver to somebody in need who was starting on a blood cancer um, journey? Yeah, so as we've been talking about, blood cancer is complex. It's not just one type of cancer. And the most important thing is really to find out what do you have? So that's one of the first things when someone calls us, a lot of times they said, you know, my doctor told me to call you. I don't even really know where to start. So the first thing we try to find out is, okay, what is your diagnosis? And really getting down to, okay, you have a lymphoma, but what type of lymphoma? Oh, I have non-Hodgkin. Okay. I have a B cell. Okay. But what subtype? Because all of that information is going to be so important for you to know exactly what it is to expect, what your treatment's going to look like, if you're going to get treatment or not, um, what kind of side effects you may have. Anything that you're going to need to know is so important to have that exact diagnosis. Your first visit with the care team is going to have a lot of information. And I often tell my patients that too. You're not going to remember everything that happened in this visit. And it's normal to forget a lot of things that you're going to learn in this visit too. So one thing is just to be sure you're given a way to contact your care team with questions because they're going to come up after the visit. It's inevitable. And often when you get home or three o'clock in the morning, when you finally think of something, so I often recommend that patients bring with them questions to their visit. Um, if it's something we don't know, we'll help them find out the uh, answer to that question. Also jot down some important information that you, you um, obtain in your visits. And then once you get home, you can go over it with you, uh, with your family members and your friends, and then you can ask your care team afterwards. Think of yourself as a survivor the day you're diagnosed. You're not a cancer patient, you're a person who has been diagnosed with cancer. And we're, to, we're here to help you with that journey. We don't expect you to do this alone. I just want to add um, something right, which I think it is important for patients to understand. And that is that every type of blood cancer is different, right? And it has different treatment options. And also the prognosis can be very different, right, as well. I will just give an example, right? Diffuse large B cell lymphoma, which is the most common type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, it is also an aggressive disease. However, approximately two thirds of all newly diagnosed patients can be cured. So I think that is very important information to have once you find out actually that you have a blood cancer. Michelle, any additional information you'd like to offer? I know that you speak to patients and caregivers every day at the LLS. You know, what are the what are the couple of things that you always remind someone of um, once they've been diagnosed with a blood cancer? What might be some of the common things you share with them or reminders? You know, we've talked about having questions for your, your healthcare team. Sometimes people don't even know what to ask, so we can help you. We can, we can try to figure out with you, okay, what are the top three things that you need to find out or talk to your doctor about so you can make educated decisions and really understand what it is that you or your loved one is dealing with? Because knowledge really is power and you can't make decisions if you don't even know what you're deciding on a lot of times. Um, the other part is getting a second opinion. Blood cancers are complex and it has no reflection on your doctor. It has no reflection on where you're getting care. It really is a wise thing to do to just have another healthcare professional who specializes this in well as well, look at your lab work, look at your scans, look at any biopsies that have been done and just to confirm that you're on the right path and you know what to do, especially if you're going for treatment. If you're at a point where you haven't had to have treatment and you need to go to treatment now, you want to know what all your options are. Um, clinical trials, we talked a little bit about that and how important that can be. And it's not a last option, which is what a lot of people think. You really 
can consider a clinical trial from the beginning if it's something that you want to look into as a possible treatment option that may not be available otherwise and get support. Get support from other people who've been through it, who know what you're going through. Get support from your family. Get support from professionals, from counselors, social workers, whoever it is, because the more support you have, the easier, not that it's going to be easier, but the easier it will be for you to be able to figure out what it is that you're dealing with and how do you get to where you need to be through all of this. Thank you. And as you said, knowledge is definitely power. The more information you have, the more empowered you are. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening today. And please be sure to tune into the next video in this three-part series. As a reminder, please note the educational content of this video is not intended to be taken as medical advice and should not replace the recommendations and advice of your doctor. Please take a moment to review the disclaimer displayed on your screen. For more information, please visit www.abvi.com. Thank you again for joining us.